Hi, my name is Lewis Carroll. I'm here to talk to you today about homocysteine, which is an amino acid that is a bit toxic in the body. Actually, it's a lot toxic in the body. It's not something that you want in there. Uh, homocysteine is, um, it damages the endothelial cells in your arteries and can lead to a buildup of plaque. Uh, it's been linked to DNA damage. Um, it's linked to Alzheimer's. It's linked to heart attacks. There are people out there that actually have low levels of cholesterol, their cholesterol readings are okay under 200 and yet they're still prone to heart attacks or they've already had some heart attacks at a fairly young age. Um, homocysteine levels are probably high. Uh, what you want to do is keep this rascal at um, I suppose about seven micromoles per liter. Uh, that would be the concentration but you know you get up around 30 or 40 or 50 uh, you could start having heart attacks even though your cholesterol levels might not be that high. Um, there are doctors out there that recommend that you lower homocysteine levels, which is correct, but the method that they're recommending doesn't seem correct to me. In other words, they're recommending that you get off of meat. Um, homocysteine comes from methionine. Methionine is uh, an amino acid that is abundant in meat. And methionine is great. I mean, you need methionine. It makes creatine in the body. It supplies sulfur. Um, it creates uh, S-adenosyl methionine, also known as SAM-E. Uh, it improves immune function. It improves the absorption of zinc and selenium in your body. Methionine converts estradiol into the weaker estriol. Uh, it's, it's considered a weaker and a safer uh, form of estrogen. Uh, prevents premature ejaculation. You can thank methionine for that. Reduces inflammation. It chelates and eliminates heavy metals. Uh, it can even help with depression. So methionine is a, is a great thing to have, but the problem is methionine is converted to many other things in the body uh, so that you can carry on your maintenance, but as, as it transitions through these various forms to get to the ultimate thing that your body wants, it's going to make some homocysteine, and homocysteine levels as they rise up in the body is associated with uh, heart disease and, and these other bad things, heart attacks and things of that nature. So you want to lower homocysteine levels. Um, there are different ways to do it. Uh, some of the B vitamins, such as uh, vitamin B6, uh, B12, and folate can be used. B6 isn't all that strong, but, um, uh, but it can be used. And basically what B6 is going to do is it co converts homocysteine into uh, something called cytothionine and ultimately uh, cysteine and uh, ammonia, which uh, ammonia you can breathe it out. Um, Vitamin B12, if you wanted to supplement some of that, uh, that, comes, that actually comes from bacteria in the gut and it can help to convert homocysteine back into methionine. So you're basically recycling it uh, to get, to get low homocysteine levels lower and methionine uh, back up. Uh, folate has actually been shown to be pretty effective. If you were to take 1,000 micrograms per day as a, as, a, uh, as a supplement, you can get extra folate. Folate does the same thing. It converts homocysteine back into methionine or just eat more fiber because uh, eating lots and lots of fiber actually changes the culture of bacteria in your intestines and you end up more of a good with more of a good kind of bacteria that creates more folate uh, and you can get rid of homocysteine levels that way that's why some people say that uh, a high fiber diet is actually heart healthy and that's one of the reasons you're going to create more folate and you're going to bring down homocysteine levels um, there is another way to do it, and it's probably, this has got to be my favorite way actually, and it's N-acetylcysteine. Um, cysteine is an amino acid that you can find in, in foods, but it's not very plentiful. Uh, it's fairly unstable. It's, it's kind of destroyed with uh, the cooking process, and I think it's the limiting factor in producing glutathione. But N-acetylcysteine lowers homocysteine levels by converting it into glutathione, and glutathione is great. You know, you want more of that in the body if you can get it. It's, it's wonderful stuff. It's considered the master antioxidant in every cell in your body. It boosts your immune system. It's a detoxifier. It uh, suppresses inflammation in the body. It's a transporter of amino acids. It uh, helps to regulate the body's response to injury. It activates uh, enzymes in the body. It strengthens um, synthesis and repair of DNA. And it steers the direction of synthesis of proteins. So it's wonderful stuff. You want more glutathione if you can get it. 
Um, this advice that the medical community sometimes gives where they want you to cut back on meats in order to lower homocysteine levels I think is the wrong way to go. Uh, personally, I'm a meat eater. I'm a carnivore. I like meat. You know, meat's great. Um, not necessarily a lot of red meat because uh, for some people it, it, it actually will increase your symptoms of arthritis. But there's, all, there's other meats. You know, there's white meats, there's turkey, there's chicken, there's shrimp if you can get it without that mercury, um, fish, you know, that type of thing. Meats are good and meats have a lot of protein in them. But instead of dropping out meats out of your diet in order to lower homocysteine levels and uh, avoid heart attacks and plaque and things like that, why not continue to eat meats to get the, uh, the methionine, which is good for you, and simply take the homocysteine and convert it into glutathione. I think that's just a better way to go. Um, that way uh, you get the meat, you get, the, you get everything that's good for you, and you can still avoid high levels of homocysteine. Uh, homocysteine, like I say, can be dropped down with those B vitamins, B6, B12, and folate, but that doesn't always work for every person. If your homocysteine levels are high and you take B vitamins and you can't get below, say, 25 micromoles per liter, then uh, you got to do something else. And that something else would be N-acetylcysteine. Generally, N-acetylcysteine, generally, actually, N-acetylcysteine has been shown to almost cut homocysteine levels in half just by itself. And at the same time, raise glutathione levels. And that's just a wonderful way to go. So you can eat your meat and get more glutathione levels and stay healthier. And I think, I think that's a great way to go. The other thing is, is I'm, I'm not too far away from uh, Loma Linda, and it's considered uh, that whole area in Southern California is, uh, has a lot of Seventh-day Adventist people there. And they live quite long lives. You know, they're doing pretty well. They'll live into their 90s, uh, maybe into their hundreds, and they avoid meat. Well, they don't seem to have a, a high incidence of heart attacks as compared with meat eaters. But let's understand the reason why. If you're not eating meats, you're going to reduce methionine levels, which is going to also reduce homocysteine levels, which is going to help you to last longer. Your vascular system is going to stay healthier by not eating those meats. But there's a way to eat meat and still live a long time. We, what we got to do is understand the mechanism that's in place, and that is homocysteine. So you can still eat your meat, but take your B vitamins, or take brewer's yeast, it's loaded with B vitamins, but take your B vitamins and take some N-acetylcysteine to lower homocysteine levels, and that way you can sort of have your cake and eat it too. You can have your meats and still not have these, these uh, heart issues. And I think that's the formula for a lot of